All right, everybody, uh, welcome back. We are looking at the Assault Carrier Project once again, and today I'm going to talk about the conversion. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, I've always envisioned this as taking the Assault Carrier and bringing it back to its cargo freighter roots. And the main way I was going to do that was to convert it so that instead of carrying TIE fighters, this was going to carry cargo pods. And I wanted to approach that using uh, 3D printing. And I don't own a 3D printer. <laughs> but that's, that does not put me out of the running for wanting to do 3D printing, as it turns out. Uh, most of you who know anything about 3D printing at all uh, are probably aware of Shapeways. Um, I've been aware of them, I think, since they first appeared, and I don't know how long ago that was. But uh, that is not your only option. Uh, as it turns out, especially if you're in a kind of metropolitan area, there are probably libraries and or colleges that have 3D printers available to the public. And that is what I did. And I don't even live in a metropolitan area, but I do live in the uh, five college area of Western Massachusetts. So UMass Amherst is uh, not horribly far away from me. And it turns out they are the only ones in my immediate vicinity that have a 3D printer available um, to the general public. Now, plus side, this is actually really cheap uh, compared to Shapeways, really, really cheap. Downside, at least for me, uh, is it's a bit of a bother. Um, so if you're gonna work with Shapeways, you're gonna send them a file and eventually they're gonna send you a part and you're pretty much done. Uh, with the with the UMass printer, the, the process is a little more convoluted. You, you send them a form with your file and the form just sort of gives basic information about you and then uh, you, you send in that file and the form and then you schedule a date for a meeting where you meet with one of the people who is working in their in that department and I guess they look over the file and, and just sort of make sure that it's something to be printed. And if you haven't filled out the forms that say, uh, yeah, you're going to pay for this even if it's broke or whatever, uh, that you're still going to pay for it. And then you go away. And then they email you again when the thing is, is printed and ready to be picked up. And then you go get it. Well, for me, that's a, it's, it's probably it's a 20-minute drive to get to the college it's a <laughs> from the and, and the it's in the library and so the the process for picking it up is you know parking on the outskirts of the college and then walking uh you know 15 minutes to get to the library and then it's on the third floor and then you buy your thing and then you go out so it's like overall it's it's at least an hour um hour no actually more like an hour and a half round trip total out of my day to just make e either one of those trips out there, either the first meeting to to essentially make sure that the file is something they're going to print, and the second to go pick it up. So um, it's not trivial. But on the other hand, uh, when you get something printed, it's pretty cheap, and they have really good 3D printers. Now, the things I'm going to show you are not indicative of that and I will explain why. Anyway, so cargo pod. Uh, the whole idea was to make cargo pods that would fit in here and this was my first crack at that. And I knew that this was really just going to be the first pass and so uh, I kind of did a basic amount of detailing on the parts because I wanted to be able to see uh, you know, what detail was going to be too fine and what was, what was going to look good and just sort of be able to visualize when you're looking at a 3d, at least me, when I'm looking at a 3d model that I've created on the screen, I, I have no sense of scale. I have no sense of how this relates, how this relates to this. So I, I just wanted to print one off once I got to a point where I was like, that looks pretty good and, and just make sure I wasn't making any big mistakes. Um, and as it turns out, it was good that I did that process because I made some big mistakes. Let's talk about the first one. Um, 
So I've got the connector here, and that is based on, be quiet, honey. Uh, this connector is based on the uh, TIE fighter holder thingies. And so I just measured those off and, and added that shape to the top of this so that it could slot in, which it sort of does. Um, I may need to make it a little narrower. And I, and I think, I don't know if that's a tolerance thing or because I miss measured but anyway it does slot in there after a little sanding problem is it doesn't go far enough in and the reason for that is that there is actually a recess here and and so anyway there's a recess here but this big circle here does not fit into that recess obviously so therefore this can never lock in because it's it's not going to clear uh, here, let's take this apart. It's not going to clear that interior width. Uh, do we need to take this all apart? I guess we need to, you know. There we go. Alright. So, as you can see, is this even the right one? I don't know if I, oh yeah, there we go. It doesn't clear that area. There's no way you can turn that and make that lock in. Let's try this one. Maybe this one works a little better. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. So that's an issue. And I, what I could do is just extend the length of that so that it comes all the way in. But I realize now there's, a, there's another reason for that recess. And that reason is that the whole surface actually has a bit of a, a slope to it, right? But that recess is flat. So I need to use that recess as the kind of mounting point because otherwise these are gonna be canted out slightly, not this much, but they'll be canted out slightly instead of being flush. So I need to, I need to utilize that, that recess. So no big deal. Um, you know, I was, I was expecting to see something like that on my first pass with this thing. So uh, one of the things I did as I was designing this is I wanted to get a good size. And that was one of the other reasons for doing this first pass on the printing. I wanted to make sure that, you know, when I had one in place, that when I was locking the other one into place, it was going to clear. No problem. It definitely works there but I forgot to check the distance front to back. I only checked the, system, the distance side to side and kind of assumed that it was the same distance front to back. And it is not. So there is just no way to lock that second one in there. And overall, I mean, the thing is, I, I felt like after seeing it live, these cargo pods were pretty huge anyway um so i think i'm going to need to scale these down by about 25 percent i think and we'll figure that out but 25 percent to get them to clear in that direction so that's going to make them a fair amount smaller but that's okay again like i said i thought they were a little bulky um the other thing i wanted to see was how this detail that i put on the bottom looked you know whether or not it looked kind of star warsy or not and uh, I, I liked that. I, I think that turned out pretty well. And there, I can, there's some details here that I might simplify um, for the sake of the printing. Like I might get rid of that, the openings in these uh, circular bits. And um, I might make these smallest uh, square bits on top of the larger square bits. I might make them a little shorter. Uh, but otherwise, really happy with how that looks. Uh, the other thing I noticed was that I've got these resources, resources, recesses running on the top and the bottom. And I think those look fantastic. And on the, you know, they, they mostly look good all around. I, I feel like they maybe didn't use the highest resolution and I was in a hurry yesterday and I forgot to ask. 
So I think printing on a higher resolution overall, those are going to look really good. And on most of the sides, they do look good. Um, but I do have a pretty fine line running around the outside of this bit here. And that didn't seem to work out that well at all. So I think this is my top, actually. I think this is how they printed it was like that. So anyway, I, I, I want to make that line a little deeper and a little wider uh, so that it actually becomes a part of the piece. Then, <clears throat> and I think one of the problems with the printing of this overall, and one of the reasons why maybe the detail doesn't look as good as it might, is again, they printed it just like that, right, as a single piece. And uh, so that's going to create some issues and what I might end up doing is slicing it into uh, component pieces like I might slice at the recess here and at the recess here um, so that that can print um, essentially this way this can print this way and the box can print either way but um, you'll get a consistent uh, consistent print all the way around and maybe uh, that will help with the details. I don't know. Again, uh, I've never really done any 3D printing before. I'm basing this on uh, what I've read about and what I've seen in videos and what have you. But anyway, that is, that's the cargo pods. And so I, I, I'm not teaching myself uh, the 3D software much. Uh, I'm learning to use uh, 123D Design from Autodesk, uh, which is a free program that you can just go grab. And I like it, um, but I have some experience with 3D in the past. I, when SketchUp first came out, came out, I taught myself to use that, and I had utilized that for a lot of projects that are not 3D printed rela printing related. And so uh, I kind of have in my mind uh, a sense of how 3D programs work, at least the more simple ones. And so learning 1-2-3D design uh, was pretty easy overall. And there's some good tutorials on YouTube. So um, I highly recommend checking it out if you have never done this before and you're thinking about trying it out. I also recommend looking around in your area. Again, you don't necessarily need to own a 3D printer to get 3D prints. And by the way, this uh, if this can get to the um, quality level that I expect, it's going to look pretty badass. Um, again, I don't think this was their highest resolution, and it was not sliced in a way to sort of maximize uh, the detail. But here's the here's the best part. Um, I actually only paid for one of these because one of these is actually a failed print, as you can see. That one's kind of kind of broke. Um, but uh, these were like three bucks to print these out, which is which is kind of cool. And if I try to get something like this printed at Shapeways, I'm guessing thirty bucks maybe would not be cheap. Um, but yeah, it 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 was surprising that you could do this. Now, I would still like to get a three D printer right now, and I'm I'm if I can make it pay for itself, then I probably will. Uh, and even though I have access to this, what would have been nice is to print these out here so that I could have worked out the issues in advance, right? I could do, I could uh, design it, print one, go quickly say, oh yeah, there's, these are some issues that I need to fix. Fix those issues right away, make another pass at it, um, and you know, figure out all the, all the big things before I was ready to do a final print and then I could send things over to the school for the final print because they have printers that I can't afford and in theory should be able to do prints that are much better than anything I might be able to do at home in theory. Uh, so that's that would be the good reason to do that and it would also save me a lot of time in terms of uh, running around and trying to get all the uh, all the projects in motion and then picking up when they're done. But that's it for this part of the project. And just so you know, uh, on the other side, on the electronic side and the lighting side, uh, I have been getting everything that I need to wire up the lighting. Uh, I think I've figured out what I'm going to do. Um, 
and how I'm going to approach all that. And now I'm just waiting on uh, a variety of bits to ship uh, from China. Uh, I've got my switches, I've got my lights, I, I bought a new uh, soldering iron. Not that I necessarily needed one, but sometimes, you know, anytime I have an excuse to buy a new tool, I will do that. And um, some of the other parts are already here. I ordered some different uh, fiber optic line. I think uh, I showed you uh, the fiber opt optics that I was thinking of using last time. And then uh, in the meantime, I came to my senses and decided I need something a little heavier. Uh, and so I ordered some 0 0.03 instead of the 0 0.01 that I have. And I thought three times the thickness would probably be better in terms of being able to actually um, work with it. <laughs> uh, but that's all on the way. And once everything shows up, as far as that stuff goes, I should be able to just jump in and start doing it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to start hogging out all of the areas that are going to need to be drilled out in order to have lights. So that's where we are. And that's been my update, and thank you for watching. Uh, just remember, if you like the video, to click like on the video. It's helpful. Uh, so is subscribing, but that's more helpful for, for you, because that way you are less likely to miss videos that you might otherwise want to see in the future. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you later.